Hi everyone, welcome to Berwick Baptist Church Online. Today is Sunday the 27th of December and it's the last Sunday of 2020. There's always something special about the last Sunday of the year, but I suppose with this one um, being the last Sunday of 2020, which has been quite a difficult and trying year for everyone with the coronavirus and all the lockdown and everything that everybody's gone through, in a way, it's a little bit of a relief that we are coming to the end of 2020. But even though we're coming to the end, we don't know what 2021 has in store for us. In my heart, I'm really excited about 2021. In my heart, I just feel that God is going to do some wonderful things in this coming year. And we're going to end this year off by thinking about doing good and this message was confirmed to me as I've been thinking about what to share on this last Sunday and I felt God lead me to Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 onwards and the thought came about don't grow weary of doing good and don't give up and many of us over this past year 2020 we've felt very weary Sometimes we felt like giving up, but I know that many Christians have continued to do good wherever they can by helping their neighbours, by getting involved in the community where you've been able to get involved in the community, even at social distance. And God wants to encourage us again, don't give up doing good, don't grow weary, don't give up, don't just say I've had enough in the sense of just your feelings and you just want to flop down in that. God wants us to keep pressing in, pressing into the kingdom and taking hold of the things of himself and to do good to people around us and not grow weary. And as I said, this was confirmed to me through Dave Ward as he, as we had the Zoom prayer meeting on Tuesday. Dave, in one of his prayers, and I don't even think he was aware of what he was praying, was talking about doing good and making a difference in our community. And again, the other day in my quiet time, the scripture from Galatians 6 came up again about doing good and not growing weary. And so I really believe this message is from the Lord for all of us today to continue to do good. Don't grow weary and don't give up because as we continue to sow by doing good, we're going to reap a harvest a harvest of souls. I really believe that this year, in 20, this coming year, 2021, that we are going to see a bountiful harvest of souls. That's what I'm believing for. 2021, I want to see souls won to Jesus Christ. I want to see people who I know, who I've been sharing the gospel with for many, many months and some for many years. I want them to come to know Jesus this coming year. And I really believe it's harvest time and that if we press in and we don't grow weary of doing good and we don't give up, we are going to see the harvest of our prayers and the answers to our prayers for our brothers and sisters, our family, our neighbours, our friends, our community, but also in our own lives that we will see answers to prayers that we've been waiting on for many, many years. The time's coming now that it's harvest time on every level that God has want to answer your prayers and to accelerate something in your life to propel you into your destiny. God has something for you to do for him in 2021. You might think, well, I'm retired. Well, I'm just going to just plod on with my Christian life and settle down. It's not time to settle down. It's time to be stirred up. It's time to push through and give birth to miracles. And you know when Isaiah, I'm getting off onto something else, going just feel God's peace in, in a floor there. In Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah 66, it talks about how they are travailed until people were born in Zion. It's time to travail, it's time to push and push and push until something in the Spirit's given birth and a breakthrough happens and I believe 2021 we're going to see breakthrough. I, I just have this excitement in my heart and in my soul. My mind is saying, John, what are you doing? What are you, why are you excited? And that nothing's changed, nothing's going to change because 
even with the the vaccine people are saying well it'll be 2022 before we see anything different and so on a natural level you think well what difference does it make something's happening in the realm of the spirit and if you and i catch the wave of the spirit that's coming now we'll ride on the crest of that wave and we will see people come to know jesus christ and you might think well john i'm getting off my sermon here and i'm just going to say this you might you might think well john how are we going to we can't gather in our church i don't know how it's going to happen my head hasn't worked that out but the scriptures in proverbs 3 it says do not lean on your own understanding do not be wise in your own eyes we have to lean on our understanding and how we're going to work it out it's not for us to work it out god will work it all out he will do it all we've got to do is be obedient and we've got to continue to do good we've got to not grow weary and not give up because we are going to see our church mushroom and multiply and the blessing of God come on us because in Jesus we're already blessed. You and I are blessed with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places. You and I have got everything we need for life and godliness. There's nothing missing in the Holy, in the Holy Spirit. You've just got to give birth to it. You've got to give birth to it in prayer and believing and we need to pray like we've never done before we need to fast and pray and to believe God for miracles Jesus said to I'm getting off my sermon here but I'm getting back to it in a minute Jesus said to to the sister of Lazarus when in um, John chapter 11 verse 40 he said if you can believe just believe all things are possible to him who believes mark 9 verse 23 you've just got to believe before you see it you have got to believe you receive before you see it. that's faith and jesus is doing something in your life in your family in your friends in your neighbors he's knocking on the doors of people's hearts people are in the valley of decision now people are searching for jesus like never before they may not even put his name on it they're searching and they're looking for answers because everything that they had for their security in life is gone now and God is going to bring a harvest in so let's get to this passage I'm going to read this passage Galatians 6 verse 7 and then we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 12 as well do not be deceived God is not mocked for whatever a man sows he will also reap for he who sows to the flesh will reap the flesh corruption but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life and let us not grow weary while doing good so we're not to grow weary doing good for in due season we shall if we do not lose heart reap therefore as we have opportunity let us do good to all so again we're to do good to all to those who are of the household of fear see what large letters I have written to you with my own hand. So Paul's going on that he's written this letter. As many as the desires to make a good showing in, in the flesh, these would compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. So in the context is Paul was writing to the Galatians who were about to give up, who were turning back to the ways of Judaism. They were thinking about, you know, relying on the law instead of relying on faith and believing and trusting just solely in faith that Jesus accomplished work on the cross has brought them salvation that they didn't need to work anything and you and I don't need to work for our salvation our salvation is secure because of what Jesus did and by having faith in him we are saved we belong to Jesus and Jesus belongs to us but here he's asking Paul is speaking to us under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and God is saying don't stop sowing good into the lives of people around you your brothers and sisters the people you work with the people you live next door to because as we do good to people as we sow into other people's lives we're going to reap a harvest in many many different ways God wants us to be sowers of good things what are you sowing into people's lives around you? What are you sowing into your children's lives and your friends' and family's lives? Into your neighbours, into the community, into the people that you work with. 
God has given you an assignment of doing good for people and being the hands of Jesus to people in very practical ways. You might think, well, I haven't got time, John. I'm so busy with work. I'm so busy. Your work is your assignment. You don't need to look around for a harvest field. Your harvest field is where you live, your neighbours, your family, your friends, your children, your work colleagues. You think, oh, well, I can't witness. I can't share the gospel like you, John. I'm not an evangelist. No, but you are a witness. A witness just sees what he sees. He tells his story, our stories of faith, of what God has done for us, of how God looks after us. And also, just by you being you in that workplace, you are a light in the darkness. You really don't realise how much of Jesus is shining out of you and touching people around you. You carry an atmosphere. You carry the atmosphere of heaven with you. You have the aroma of life which is flowing off you and touching people. You know, I've walked up the street and sometimes you get a whiff of an aftershave or a perfume as a person passes by. They don't touch you, but they pass you by and you know that person has poured on themselves or put on themselves some aftershave or some perfume and it's a beautiful fragrance and you just, wow, that's a nice perfume, that's a nice aftershave, you know, and it, and there's something about that person because they, they carry that fragrance with them. Well, you know, <laughs> I was coming down Mary Gate and I've renamed it Weed Street because when you come onto Mary Gate at night time and that the smell of weed coming out of some of the flats in there, it's terrible, really terrible. And then I was coming through b &M Car Park the other night and I was following this person and you could smell the weed on them. It was it was horrible and stinking, you know. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, you could smell it. And I was nowhere. I was I was yards away from them. And then I followed them into B and M, and they went round B and M. And you could smell that they had been smoking weed, you know. So we all carry, in a, on a natural level, you carry either the the order of perfume or or aftershave, or if you if sometimes you're like me, you carry the order of bo. Um, or if you smoke pot and weed and that, you're going to carry that with you wherever you go. You cannot hide it. And that is in the natural realm. And in the spiritual realm, you and I, we carry the fragrance of life with us into our workplace. We carry light. We're light bearers. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are clear, broken, cracked vessels and we have a treasure within you, have something within you, God Almighty, who wants to pour out of you on people around you. And as you do good deeds and good things for people, just out of pure love, not because they deserve it, because you want to bless them, it's going to touch their hearts and it's going to affect them. They're going to think about why does this person do this? You might go into work, you might make everybody's coffee. You might go into, you know, school and you might always be smiling at people and they just need that smile. They need to feel, well, that's just lovely. It's brightened up my dear, that smile. You might think nothing of your smile, but your smile can change a person's day. You might not think nothing of your compliment you give a friend at work or at school or wherever you are or your neighbours and that, it might change their world. What good are you doing for people? What good are you doing for your children and your grandchildren? Are you always scolding them? Are you always speaking negative over them? Or are you looking for the gold in them and are you praising them and saying, well done, that's amazing what you've done. You're really valuable. You you know how much I love you. Do you tell your children, and even though they're adults, that you love them? Do you really tell them? I, you know, I tell my kids all the time, I love you. You know I love you. You know your dad loves you. I, I, I just love you to bits. You know, and I tell them. Sometimes I say, you know, if, 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 I, had, if I had to give everything up just for you, if I had to give my life up to you, Every now and again, I'll just say, I would do that for you. You know, I wouldn't even need to think about it because I want my kids to know how much I love them. And I tell them that and I keep telling them and I keep reminding them, your dad loves you. I love you. I think you're brilliant, even when they mess up. And I tell them sometimes when, when my children mess up and I say, well, you know, I'm, I'm not happy with that. You know, you've done that wrong. But I'm going to tell you something. 
I'm never going to reject you. I love you. And you do good for your children. And you do good for your grandchildren. You do good for your neighbours. What kind of things do you do? Well, I don't know. Maybe in the summertime you cut the cut the hedge. You you could just do little things. And some some people are already doing things like that. Doing their shopping for people who can't get out. There's all ways and manners of ways of doing good for people. Don't grow weary of doing good and sowing into somebody's life and investing your life into somebody. That's what we are, as Christians are called to do. We're to invest our lives in one another. We're not there to promote ourselves and think, look at me, look at me. No, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about my brothers and sisters around us to invest our lives and to give our lives up for one another and to to lose our rights sometimes you know the days of fighting over doctrine are over now you know one time i would give people run for their money on secondary issues and doctrine not now what is more important to me than people's doctrines it's their souls it's being a friend to them it's letting them know i'm not bothered if you have different doctrines to me it doesn't really matter what matters is is that I want you to know I love you. I want you to know if you're on hard times, I want you to come to me. I want you to be able to come and I'll have a listening ear. We're not fighting over doctrines anymore. We want to love each other. We want to care for each other. We want to show the world that our God is love and that within the household of God, there is a place of safety. We in our church, Berwick Baptist Church, over these past few years, God's been talking to us about how our church family is to be a place of safety a place where people can come in and be loved unconditionally and feel cared for and you know what i believe we're getting there we have had some wonderful miracles answers to prayers with people who aren't even a part of our church yet who are feeling a part of a church some of them aren't even christians yet some of them are but they're feeling that they're being cared for by our church family Sadly, we can't all get together in our building anymore, but they're still travelling with us. We've had a great year in seeing growth and seeing people come to faith. And yeah, it's not as many as I would have liked because of the lockdown. We've, we've not been able to get some of the new Christians of 2019 to come into the building and, and get settled into church life. But we're going to get there. And so we have to continue to do good wherever we can. And not grow weary. Now, how do we not grow weary? Let's turn quickly to Hebrews um, in chapter 12 because there is um, some verses in chapter 12 which tells us, you know, how not to grow weary. Chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every, every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us you and i have a race god has set a, a course for us to run and everyone's course is a little bit different and i always looked at every day i get up i'm running a lap in that race the course of life that god has set before me and so when i get up in the morning i commit everything to the lord and i say this is your dear lord i'm running the race for you whatever comes in front of me lord if it's people they're the ones you want me to love and care for and witness to. If it's obstacles, they're the mountains that I'm to speak to and they're to be removed. Or you're going to get me through. You'll make a way where there's no way. Because God has every day planned and he knows what's coming in that day. And he gives us the strength and the ability to do that. And he also gives us the strength and the ability and the anointing and the power to be witnesses and to do good for people. And so we are to run that race and also it says in verse 2, looking unto Jesus, we have to look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, has sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him, we're to consider Jesus, think about Jesus, who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary, you see. Unless we consider him, if we're looking at other things, if we're looking at life, if we're looking at the coronavirus, if we're looking at lockdown, we're going to grow weary. 
But if we keep our eyes and our hearts, eyes and our mind upon Jesus and see that he's working in all of this, he's working on our lives, he's working on our circumstances, and he has begun our faith, he's the author of our faith, he's the finisher of our faith, we are not going to grow weary because he will strengthen us in our inner man by the power of the Holy Spirit as we keep our eyes fixed upon him. And the mind that is stayed upon God has great peace. God keeps them in peace. Isaiah 26 verse 3 when your mind is steered upon Jesus inside you're going to have peace he's going to keep you in Romans 8 verse 5 to 6 the mind that is set of the things of the flesh is death in other words if you're reaping the sown of the flesh you reap corruption but the mind that is set on the things of the Holy Spirit is life and peace what are the things of the Holy Spirit it's the word of God Jesus is my word is spirit and life so if you want to see the things of the Holy Spirit, keep your eye on the word of God, because in the pages of the scriptures, we see Jesus. He comes alive to us through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the scriptures. We see him on the pages of the gospel and we know what he's like and we can see how he wants to work within our hearts and minds. And so if we keep our minds and eyes on Jesus, we'll not grow weary. So um, I will not grow weary or discouraged in our soul. You have not resisted to bloodshed striving against sin and you have forgotten the exaltation then which speaks to us and to sons and then it goes on about not despising the chastening of the lord so you and i for 2021 are to keep our eyes on jesus to keep our minds set on the word of god and the promises of god and to press in to all that god has for you and me and to keep on doing good, to be blessings to our brothers and sisters in the church, phone people up, see how people are, see if we can help one another, but also our friends, our neighbours, our family, and believe God for household salvation this year. Believe, and even if your children have come to know the Lord and they're not walking close to the Lord, believe that God will grab them, he will arrest them for his purposes, and he will turn their lives around and bring them right onto their path of their destiny. God has great things in store for you and me and for our families and this community in 2021. Don't get distracted by the coronavirus and the lockdown. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Look beyond the circumstances of the natural realm. Look into the realm of the spirit and see what God is doing and move with him, whatever he's doing in your life and in our church. And together we will see great victories in 2021. God bless. Let's pray. Father, I pray for all my brothers and sisters who are listening to this. Let your blessing and anointing and encouragement and strength and refreshment fill their hearts, fill their souls, fill their minds. Help them to do good. Help them not to grow weary and not to give up, but to press on and take a hold of that which you have taken their, a hold of them for, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless.